My name's Justin Ramsden and I'm a model designer here at the LEGO Group and I've designed the LEGO Harry Potter Hogwarts Castle set. I've designed the set in the way so the, the builder goes on the same journey that Harry took when he first entered Hogwarts. You start off by building the boats and go up to the boathouse, then you take the stairs to the Great Hall and then to the towers and to the classrooms. And I just want people to experience that magic and, and the excitement of either going to Hogwarts for the first time or returning back to this magical universe. I got brought into the Harry Potter project and I saw this model in the corner and I was like, I need to work on that. So I talked to Justin and we just had a great collaboration because he is also a big Harry Potter fan. So we're like, oh, what, what do we do? We just got overexcited of how much things we can put into this big castle. And I just wanted to make this castle the most magical thing that LEGO has ever produced. Research was definitely a part of, of designing this set. Um, not only did I have the audio book on repeat while I was building the model, I was watching the films every night, I was reading the books, I went to the theme parks and the studio tours, and there's so much in the Harry Potter universe that you can get obsessed with and, and dive straight into, so I did. There's a part that I absolutely love in the model, and that's the stained glass that we managed to recreate in LEGO format. Um, not only does it have two new elements that's created especially for this set, but it's an interesting build technique that I know the fans will really, really love. I also really like the car in the Whomping Willow. It's a great little build and it's amazing how you can create such an iconic vehicle out of using such a small amount of parts. This is different to the Hogwarts sets that we've released before because not only are there more elements that fans are used to, but there's also a different scale. This is at micro scale rather than minifigure scale. That means some of the, the windows and doors are smaller than fans may be used to, but it allows for more interesting building techniques and also more of the castle to build. One of the main things that I really struggled with was the huge tower that's in the centre of the model. And I spent weeks trying to figure out, oh, how can I get this window in and how can I get the moving staircases at the back? And one day a few designers walked past and they were working on a rocket at the time and they're like, oh, maybe you look at our build. And it's that collaborative nature that LEGO allows us that really lent itself to the model and, and then I managed to create the tower, which is, which is great. We struggled with the amount of things that we wanted to put. How do we limit it? Because we were like, this is the time, we got to put everything in it, let's do it, right? But then sometimes you got to dial it back. You know, usually with stickers, less is more, but in this case, we thought it would be great to just put as much as we could. For instance, we have Moaning Myrtle, we have the Golden Egg from the Triwizard Tournament, we have the Room of Requirement, the Floating Keys Room, we have all kinds of stuff. Graphic design brings a little bit of story into the models. For instance, in the Hogwarts set, we put a lot of reference to the books and to the movies that can give a little bit more character. So we created four exclusive minifigs, one for Godric Gryffindor, Helga Hufflepuff, Rowena, Ravenclaw, and Salazar Slytherin, which are the Hogwarts founders. We also created 27 trophy figs of various characters. What I'm really proud of is that we managed to get Umbridge's office into the set because Umbridge is my favorite character because she's so evil and great. Just the fact that we had that office in there and we got to do a trophy fig of her is a big accomplishment for me. When I first started designing this set, I knew it was going to be big, but I never thought it'd ever be the second largest LEGO set ever. It was only when we started creating all these small details that I realized, oh, hang on, this is a big, big piece count. And it was that piece count that was really interesting to me because I could sort of have fun with it. So the 6,020 element piece count relates to one of my first LEGO sets that I ever got as a child. Um, it's a small wizard shop, comes with the first ever LEGO wizard, and the set number of that was 6020. It's the same as piece count, so a lucky coincidence, and I know fans will really enjoy those even further Easter eggs that we've hidden away. I think people will really want this set because not only is it an interesting selection of parts with new elements and new colour changes that we put in especially for this model, but also it's a huge statement piece that they can have on their, their table and, and show their friends and family and I think people are really in awe when they see it built. If I got this as a kid, I would be like, I wouldn't even understand what was happening right now. I would be like, oh, this is amazing. I need this in my life. I can't wait to build it, get in there. I mean, that's what, how I am right now and I'm an adult, so.
Yeah, as a child, I was, I was sort of known for writing to, to Lego and, and requesting new themes. So when the first Harry Potter book came out, I wrote a letter to Lego saying, you must make Lego Harry Potter sets. And they did, so I'm sort of responsible for, for making that happen. <laughs> It's super exciting to work in Henry Potter because I know that there's so many fans out there that are gonna enjoy the set. Like, I can't wait to build it. I have not built it yet. I'm super proud to be part of this project. Here in the LEGO group, what really inspires me are the people because working with Justin, for instance, was amazing. I wanted to make this happen for him and for everyone else. So just having the collaborative environment really inspires me. When I got the offer for my job that came through the post, it was sort of like Harry receiving the letter to Hogwarts. I was super excited, ran around the house, waving it down the stairs and, and told my parents immediately. Yeah, so the, the first days were much like Harry experienced at Hogwarts and he, he got his lesson plans and his spell books and stuff. And since then I've been studying and building and yeah, playing ever since. It's such a magical place to work and it's always filled with excitement. Yes, there's no moving staircases, but we do have a slide, so it's, it's great. Well, I got here by chance because what I did was I saw a posting uh, for a graphic designer at LEGO and I'm like, there's no way that I can get that job. So of course, I'm gonna apply for it. And then the next thing I know, I'm here doing a video for you guys. The way I explain working at LEGO to someone is, is jaw-dropping moments. Every day, I'm getting another what? Or like, just trying to pick my jaw up the floor. And to find out that I was working on the Harry Potter franchise was, was mind-blowing. I mean, I've worked on some fantastic lines in my, my few years working at LEGO, but this is the icing on the cake. This is so amazing. <laughs>